thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Zina LaRue. I'm an investigative health journalist, a clinical nutritionist, and a health coach. And I want to extend a warm, warm welcome to our very special guest, Dr. Igor Chetojevic. Um, and he's tuning in from the lovely Cyprus. And it's such an honor to be able to connect with you today. And I feel extremely grateful, and all our viewers feel extremely grateful that you are willing to share your knowledge and your wisdom with all of us here in the southern part of Africa. So um, as many of you know, Dr. Eagle is the doctor, um, was known as the doctor who fixed Novak Djokovic, um, and he's really gained celebrity status in the world of tennis. So he's a qualified medical doctor. He was working as a general practitioner for a while, but then he just realized that he needed to further his studies and he has qualifications and many degrees. A little birdie told me that it's around nine. I think maybe it's more. He doesn't want to tell me. But um, yeah, it, it really gives him a unique perspective um, when working with his patients and his athletes. So welcome, Dr. Eagle. Thank you for inviting me. And also, I'm happy to share some inside of my practice and uh, invite my friends also to have on um, little uh, experience sharing with the uh, people who are interested in, in the world of tennis or any kind of sport. And um, little gems to learn today will be fine for everybody, I think. Uh, but uh, also I'm happy to share with, with the you because I have a special connection with South Africans. Okay, and uh, big things happening in me in South Africa, you know, meeting right people right time from, in my life. And I visit South Africa maybe six, seven times. Okay, and always for something good. Always I learn something there. Okay, and help me in my development because maybe I'm open person and I am learning everywhere. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, South Africa was really particularly very important for me. And uh, when you contact me, so I was kind of like touched with the emotional link that I had in the past with this country. Wonderful. Yes, thanks, Doctor, for sharing that. And um, and I'm also very excited to share with you that we have two other very special guests joining us. Um, and they're also very good friends of Dr. Eagle. So firstly, I want to welcome Vesma Dolons. She's a retired Serbian tennis player and she was a Serbian Fed Cup player. And she earned career heights of WTA 84 in singles and 93 in doubles. And her best results was were the third round of Wimbledon and Australian Open in singles and in finals and doubles in WTA in Tascan. So welcome, Vesna. Thank you so much for joining us. And Vesna will also help um, so. share a bit more on, you know, the daily routine and how it works when you are on tour in terms of how you should be training, what you should be eating. So, yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. I'm also happy because when Igor asked me to uh, to join it, I was very happy because I love to to share all the knowledge which I have. So it's 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 very good. Uh, I'm very happy with this. Yes, and thanks for being here. And then last but not least, we've got Boris Bosnakovic, um, and he's currently the head tennis coach of the Novak Tennis Center, and he has served as a coach on the ATP and the WTA World Tour since 2000. Um, and he was also the Serbian Davis Cup team head coach between 2010 and 2013. And we all know that they won the Davis Cup title in, in 2010 with Novak Djokovic being uh, or leading the team. And as a player, he also um, reached, he was 100 junior in the world um, or top 100 junior in the world. And he reached a career high of 740 on the ATP tour. So Boris, thank you for being here and welcome. Thank you for having me, Zina. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's uh, definitely um, exciting to 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 hear what everybody has to say, and 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 we learn every day. So I'm hoping to learn something today as well. And it's a pleasure to have to to be asked by Dr. Igor, to uh, a longtime friend, to to be on this uh, this uh, chat. Yes, absolutely. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Eagle, for putting us in contact. Um, and yes, we are really we're grateful that you're willing to join us today. Okay, so um, going back to Novak Djokovic. So we all remember that when, when Djokovic struggled to get through his five set matches, um, he often took those, those, you know, he took those medical time out and he just seemed like he lacked the stamina and the energy to get through, through those matches, right? And it's then when, when Dr. Eagle came into his life. So we're all very curious 
to, to know how the relationship started, Dr. Eagle, how did you meet him? And most important, how did you help him? Oh, well, that's, uh, I'm not so kind of like TV guy who like to watch too much uh, uh, sport on TV or something. A friend of mine told me to do it so, and um, he's kind of like Serbian guy and, and uh, playing well, and I didn't know about him anything that time. And um, I watched uh, Australian, I think 2010. Okay, it was put a final, I think, and he played very, very well for a while, you know, and um, kind of like my watching kind of like a little bit match, not not deeply, <laughs> okay. And uh, he started to kind of losing stamina, you know, and uh, have some medical and commentator said that uh, Tomak Djokovic has asthma, you know, that's, and that actually was kind of catch for me because I'm a medical doctor and seeing kind of somebody who is performing and they had some issues and also let's go to see what's going on there. There was a medical and again, kind of like a break and the commentator mentioned maybe a few times about asthma, 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 and I start to observe what's going on there. And uh, through my background and knowledge and experience, I can guess is not asthma, something else that he, that, that, that breaking his uh, game because he was very good, kind of like was two sets against Tonga and start to decline, you know, with performance and medicals and so on. It was two, one, two, two. And on the end, he lost this match. And uh, and I'm seeing kind of something is kind of not asthma there. And I didn't go there and deeper what's going on, but uh, reading body language and uh, have my experience and knowledge, I guess it's something else. And friend of mine who told me about this match, you know, he we had coffee next day, you know, in our cafe neon here in Cyprus, and he said, "Ah, oh, can know it was very good, and he lost match because he had asthma." I said, "It's not asthma." And also my wife, who was around, he told me, he said, "Can I who is this guy?" I said, "Don't Serbian guy, you know, but and she's American person, you know, and very op- Americans are very open." And she said, "Go and help him, you know." <laughs> it's kind of so simple. Go and help him. I said, "Okay, how how can I call somebody? Hello, I can help you. Doesn't work, you know." <laughs> okay, and uh, that's uh, next day. I have coffee, you know, with my friend, and he told me about his sportsman, you know. And he told me, "said it's kind of he kind of you know a close match." He was asthma. He said, "It's not asthma." Blah, blah 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 blah. And he said, "Well, I know some people. Maybe you can make contact, you know, and maybe you can help him." And so I said, "I don't know, you know." It's, I, I will try to make contact, you know, that's kind of just introduce you, maybe, you know, can help him. And that's how it's happened, you know, to the friend of friend and uh, they heard about me and um, I went um, to visit him, you know, in one tournament it was in, 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 in the time of Davis Cup, Serbia Croatia play and uh, we have kind of click and I start to, you know, discuss and talk and to see what's going on and start to build up puzzles, you know, I always see person like a puzzle. Okay, and I see this all these puzzles together, and I, what they're missing, what they are not in the correct place, and, and start to build up this uh, uh, story. Okay, and uh, start to introduce what is possible and what is necessary, and how to do it. And of course, I'm uh, unusual medical doctor who doing different ways and <laughs> different approaches. And uh, seeing Noah, who is very, that time, I, he is, he's still young man, you know, but that I was 10 years younger, okay? And I need to find a way to introduce him uh, little knowledge. And I'm seeing he's very keen to learn. And he's very unusual, very keen to learn, you know, and he, he's ready to do everything, you know, to learn, to, to do it, to succeed. Because in that time, he's already was good. You know, but was kind of not, not enough good, okay, that his kind of ultimate goal was to be the best in the world, okay. But for me, tennis was just introduced at that time because I have no clue about tennis, even though I have no rules or what's going on. I know some two guys are hitting balls over the you know, net, and that's it, you know, <laughs> that's my knowledge about tennis, you know. But uh, uh, when I'm seeing these puzzles around and uh, start to introduce them nicely and uh, seeing how he digesting this information, okay, and uh, start to kind of like present uh, this information for him and to see how he receiving it and how he digesting and how he implementing it, and he start to be better. Mm. That you was know, 2010, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing other puzzles need to be built up also, okay, and I explain him how I'm seeing it and then how it's possible to do it, and um, he said, let's go to work for a while to see what is the results of our work? And uh, luckily, everything was good for him, good for me, and I learned new world for me. 
Okay, I grew up with sports people before and after Novak, of course, but, kind of, but tennis was new for me. And I was really amazed to seeing uh, these young players uh, or, or big names players who are going in hotels and eating everything that is provided to them. You know, and uh, I said, what's for me, kind of not, not real. Okay, because I'm seeing this food could be a big problem for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm seeing through my experience and knowledge and da -da -da -da, that's a big, big issue. But uh, we can talk with somebody for you know for hours or ages about food. They can looking through you because they don't see it. Okay, but uh, Nola was fantastic because he was known already and start to be kind of very good and excellent. And people said, "What's going on here?" One boy who complained about matches, who was really tired all the time, and who can kind of fought Mark Asma. Now he's kind of like Superman, you know. And this was kind of a big um, introduction for me, for this world, and uh, seeing how these things are uh, going on with him very well. And I'm seeing all these gaps that need to be necessary to be filled with good stuff. And uh, that was beautiful one year of work, and he achieved his goals. And uh, I'm happy, he's happy, everybody happy. Tennis world is happy, still is happy 10 years after. <laughs> 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 it's a great story, and um, I've, I've heard this story many times, but what stands out for me every single time is, is your wife. Your wife's yeah. comment in the background, it's like this yeah, non she, she, non she, non nonsense she, approach. It's just like, go out there, man. If, I mean, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, don't, don't complicate too much. Go and help, because <laughs> she, she doesn't already kind of know what I'm doing. She already is doing certain... Uh, healing uh, therapies and so on and all. I said, okay, go help me. You know, why, why complicate, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, and this is a holistic approach that you take, right? So when you're working with athletes yep. and anyone for that matter. And um, yeah. I find it very interesting that, like you mentioned, when you started practicing medicine, you found that something was missing. You know, you couldn't effectively yep. heal your patients. It's what, it wasn't enough for you to just prescribe medicine and to see if it worked or not, you know? So you continued searching and you studied Chinese medicine and acupuncture and all types of different things. And by doing this, you really learn to look at a patient's problem from a totally different perspective. And you learn this whole system approach, right? Where you, where you yeah. look at the, at the entire person and their environment and everything that's influencing them instead of yeah. trying to fix individual parts. And um, like you said, you need to go address the root cause of the problem. It's not good to just treat the symptoms. It's gonna show That's up true. in some other way again, right? So um, I find true. it, and, and you also mentioned this, I find it very worrisome that many athletes out there, and maybe Vesna and Boris, you can add here, um, I find that many people who come to see me or athletes I talk with, just tell me that, you know, nutrition is not important to them. They don't worry about nutrition. They think like, we just have to train harder. Um, and then we, in that way, we're going to reach our goals. And um, I find that it's not true at all. But what are, what are your thoughts on this? Well, yeah, um, this is a, a question directed at me, right? Um, yeah, I <laughs> just, I mean, I, I'll interject anyway. Um, well, definitely, I, I think you're correct um, that most, uh, I don't know if I can say most, but I, I almost uh, dare to say most uh, professional athletes really don't take care of their um, nutrition mm -hmm. uh, as much as they should, at least, for sure. Um, it's unfortunate that it's more, I think, a lot of them, it's lack of knowledge. I think mostly it's not so much um, that they don't want to. I think a lot of them don't know who to ask, don't know who to go to. Um, luckily, I've known Dr. Igor for, for a while now, so I've had the privilege and the luck to uh, send a lot of my players to him. Um, to, to discuss and consult about nutrition. So I think that, that really helped me in my work to get my athletes um, in, in good enough shape and, and, um, and, and even to, you know, to be able to perform at, at, their, at their best. You know, obviously, you have to put together all the other aspects and you know, physical preparation and, and tennis and all that other stuff. But at least if they're eating well and, and they can get the most energy out of themselves every day at practice and in competitions. And I think that, that really helps, obviously. And I think uh, what's important is that also for them to know that they put in 
uh, good stuff into their bodies and that they they can kind of trust that, right? That they can rely on that. I think that also affects the, the mind, their, their mental approach and they have the confidence then to, to go out there and perform. So the holistic approach, I think that's what, 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 it, what it does. It, it, it helps the athlete kind of go through their, you know, check, check all the, all the boxes and, and make sure that, you know, I've taken care of my nutrition. I've, you know, I've, I've done, I've done some meditation or psychology or, or, you know, and I've gone out and, and compete or practice for hours, you know, on my maybe weaknesses in tennis or certain things. And then that all that stuff gives you confidence to go out and perform. And so it's all connected for sure. It doesn't really help just to go out and hit thousands of balls um, on the yeah. tennis court. If, I also if I would can, like to, to if add I can, that. If I can interrupt for a second, just uh, uh, I like the word um, people they said, said, I can practice hard. Okay. I said, practice smart. Okay. <laughs> you yes, use it's, not it's not happening to kill most of the time. Yes. Yeah. I would like no, to add also that um, uh, I would say to Boris, probably maybe most of the, uh, especially juniors are not, uh, are not taking care of nutrition. And that's a big problem and it's a big fight sometimes because um, it's very hard to, to explain to parents and to juniors that uh, you have to take care of your body. You have to take care about everything, not only to hit balls. It's not enough uh, for sure for the uh, being a real professional. And that's why it's not that much... Uh, let's say top 100, top 200 and top four players in the world because only the best are coming there. But uh, also what is the problem that, uh, like Igor said, that for example, Djokovic, he was very keen to, uh, to learn. Yes, and not, not many people really want to learn. So they have some their strategy, let's say, uh, they think that uh, it's, it's enough to do and they, they're doing enough for the success. But most of the time it's, it's not enough. And you have to learn new things and you have uh, to have an open mind for something new and maybe which is uh, which unknown for you, uh, which is maybe strange. For example, for me, when I um, when I uh, uh, saw Igor uh, first time, I was uh, I was shocked a little bit because it was so strange for me because I also had asked my had uh, mononucleosis. I was uh, um, in a very bad shape. Struggle, like struggle. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I would say like this, before, before Igor, it was just for me, uh, I had the knowledge okay, about nutrition, about um, um, medicines a lot. I, I had a plenty of prescriptions, medicines, and for asthma, and for monoclosis, and just for, for everything, you know. Um, I had a huge bag of medicine things, you know, <laughs> when I was traveling. And then, um, then I also wanted to learn something new. I had an open mind for this. And that's why, for example, I, I do not have asthma anymore. I stopped to struggle with this without any medicine. So before I had all this, uh, you know, salbutamol stuff, all these puffs, you know, and without them, I couldn't uh, play. Uh, so any, any match was always with asthma problem, you know. And uh, now uh, I don't know for how many years, already maybe for six years, something like this. Yeah, maybe. I... Uh, I do not have these uh, prescriptions anymore at all. And also when I came to Igor, um, I was not able to play professionally. All doctors said that it's uh, no chance for me to keep going professionally. And it was a big question because I wanted to coach uh, after my professional career. Um, I didn't have, uh, let's say, power even to coach to work because I was sleeping maybe for 16 hours a day and I had no power to get up from the sofa. You know, I was just moving from the bed to the sofa, from sofa back to the bed, you know, and that's it. That was uh, all my uh, fitness on that moment. <laughs> and uh, and Igor, would, I would say, was my last chance, you know, to, to do something. And uh, on that moment, I was maybe even not hoping to come back professionally again, but maybe to be just a normal person who is able to to work, to live the whole day and uh, uh, to, to be young and to have lots of power you know <laughs> and um and then i was uh, coming back slowly and slowly i had to change lots of, of my habits and uh, then actually i came back professionally again so that was uh, my second chance to play again professionally so that's, and it was without that's, that's, any medicines 
thank thank you to remind me of this lovely story because um, uh, when when I met you, kind of like we talk about, uh, uh, you, you just was keen to be alive, you know, to function, yes. to, to do, yes. for daily in my life. Forget tennis, you know, already tennis was kind of like oh, no chance anymore. But uh, I, I heard a lot of people, uh, particularly in tennis or in other sports, uh, they have issues with monoclosis because young people, they travel a lot, you know, in, from hotel to hotel, you know, planes, whatever. And of course, it's, uh, we have uh, bugs around, you know, that's always, they were and always will be around us and in us. But if it's body not prepared very well and if we are under constant stress, our immune dropping down, okay? And that's the kind of people I said, virus is issue, virus is not issue, virus is always around us and in us, but the issue is immunity and our strength and how we recover our bodies after this exhaustion, okay? And travelings and trainings and so on, because they're training, let's say, a few hours per day, if they're not eating very well, they're doing, they have mental stress, emotional stress, plus of all, losing games, you know, whatever it is, all, all these things is so stressful for young people. And they are exposed for these uh, environmental issues, plus of all, okay, and they get, catch a problem, you know, and uh, all career go in jeopardy. Okay, and when, when I met Vesna, you know, she, she was very good in that time, you know, and, and energy dropped down, you know, and uh, what's happened, the uh, model closes, my career going down, blah, 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 but I said, let's go to do it something, you know, and she was very keen to do it, uh, to work. I said, we need a few months to work really hard, okay, to just pass this wall, you know, and later on we can build up your sport career to be as much as you like. And uh, luckily yeah. she's a smart person. Yes, you are smart. She learned, she learning also, you know, it's still learning. Okay. And applying knowledge and I, I'm very happy to share it, you know, because somebody who likes to learn, let's go to share and to see what, where is our limit, you know, and uh, he, he turned back, she turned back uh, to play professionally later on. It was a little tournament she won, I think, in the end. And said, okay, yeah, yes. it, it's time for me to finish now nicely my career, not kind of like poor me. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I, I finished career when I was uh, when I was ready to. You know, it was very important moments, actually. Not to finish the career when you don't want it because of the struggles with the, with the body, but to finish the career when you are ready for this and to just to turn the other page of your life, let's say, like this and to... Uh, keep going so everything was under let's say and uh, it makes uh, your next uh, step in your life more healthy let's say this and in balance yes and um yeah thanks for sharing your story with us as well Vesna um and yes what I what I'm hearing is you know there's a lot of things that you can do um except for training harder so Dr. Igor you said you need to train smarter firstly and you also mentioned the role of nutrition and this whole holistic approach but what I find to be important that all of you mentioned is that you need to be keen to learn you need to be open to you know accept these different strategies and try different strategies to see whether you can improve your game right um, and um, something else I'm, I'm thinking about is yes it's important what you're eating but I know Dr. Igor also taught Djokovic how to eat, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I read an article um, where they reported that Djokovic had a, had a craving for chocolate um, and he hadn't had chocolate for something like 18 months. And then he asked the, the physiotherapist to bring him a, 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 a bar. And then he simply broke off one square. He put it in his mouth. He let it melt in his mouth. And he just enjoyed that one block. He put the rest away. I mean, after he hadn't had chocolate for 18 months, come on. So you, <laughs> you, you taught him about mindset and about his relationship with food as well, I believe. Is that right, Dr. Eagle? That's uh, actually that's uh, actually telling the same story for everybody who come to visit me, you know, I, teaching people how to eat, not mean physically. Okay, physically, of course, we need to chew it food properly and so on. But it's important for us, like human beings, to be aware that we are not only just bones and meat and organs. Okay, we have other aspects of our uh, creation and uh, they, all, they all need to be harmonized. That's mean it with calm mind. Okay, and it's uh, very important to calm mind and to approach our meal because uh, today we are getting disturbed with all this stuff around us, particularly younger generation who growing up now in, 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 let's say in tennis world, they're growing up with telephones, okay? With tablets, with computers, okay? And they're all time around them, okay? Getting disturbed. And some journalist, I think a few years ago mentioned very nice, uh, nice, nice comment. And actually good observation, I think for me, 
because she said, why they are Djokovic and Nadal and Federer, they are kind of like on top for all these decades, okay? Decades and something. Because they are a large generation who didn't grow up with technology, okay? And they have formed themselves in all of an organization. They are not kind of growing up with telephones and getting disturbed all the time. Mm -hmm. Because when his mind disturbed all the time, okay, this reflect later on our lives, whatever we do, or sport or business, or whatever, okay. And uh, what I told uh, Novak and other people, said, please, when you have a meal, just switch off your telephone, okay. Everything can wait for you, okay. Just it's time for you when you're charging your batteries, you know, and be focused there. Bless your meal, be grateful and thankful. Just imagine how many people in this world in this moment have no chance to have food, okay? And just be grateful to having it, you know? And you can choose even what you like to eat, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's how we set up mentally our chakras and our hormones and our enzymes to work in harmony. And when food coming in our body is ready to be digested, okay? And very important for sport people, to understand that stomach is a mental organ, not brain, stomach, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it's, it's later on is uh, reflecting in our autonomical nervous system. And in Chinese medicine, we say saying kind of worry is affecting stomach, okay? And you hear over worry or over tense and nervousness affecting stomach. And now imagine this poor stomach is under tension and receiving some food, okay? And of course, it will be not digested properly. And some of this food will be kind of like rotten, in, if I use the word rotten in our intestines, okay, and getting absorbed in our system, in our blood, in our muscles, in our ligaments. And of course, we're getting injured when we pressurizing this part of the body in some performances. Okay, that's the reason why we have a lot of injuries around because of people they're eating, not consciously eat, eat, eating wrong first. They're not conscious about eating, but you know, and actually eating under stress. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of putting a wrong petrol in the car. I always using word if you have for, for, to get picture to understand. Uh, just imagine yourself like Ferrari, uh, like Ferrari, kind of a very kind of known best Formula One car, let's say. And you're putting kind of wrong petrol inside, and you don't even watching that you're putting this petrol in tank. Okay, and you're expecting to be the best performer, you know, in, 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 under under pressure. No way. We need to pay attention to all parts of our quote mark car and tires and engine and petrol and oil and so on and put them to work together. That's how we can be professional sportsmen, you know. Talents, they are there. Of course, we have a lot of talented people around. But to be manifested, we need all these pieces of puzzles to put them together and with their underperformance to come on surface with all what they have to show us and to, we can enjoy game on the end. <laughs> yes, and I get, I well, Go, go Sorry, ahead. No, I just wanted to. I just wanted to say that to the, the Dr. Igor will be pleased to know that Novak still respects a lot of his uh, his teachings. And I just had lunch with him the other day, and he's really he he will never take his phone. He'll pay attention to what he's eating, and he he also doesn't like to to have other people around when you eat. Ideally, it doesn't happen all the time, but so he can focus on it. And so I think that's important that he, you know, that he does that a, a lot. And, and even if we're in meetings at the club, or he'll never take a lot of, a lot of people now use their phones to write down things or to even record things, or uh, he still carries his notebook and his pen, his old school, writes things down. And anyway, so a lot of the stuff that you taught him, he still does. Okay, <laughs> so 10 years after, thing. that's been something is good, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. it's uh, for sure. For example, I also changed my uh, food habits about this and I started to eat differently. And actually, my, all my family, uh, that was a harder part. So if I, I just changed, <laughs> the family <laughs> didn't change that fast, you know, <laughs> because to break the habits of family, sometimes it uh, uh, takes a longer period. But um, I can say, for example, my some of my players, they still have a habit of eating with uh, phones and uh, sometimes I catch them that uh, they, when I ask them how much did you eat and I saw that they eat it, uh, much more than they should for example, than, uh, before the practice and they, uh, they're, not, they're not focused on their food so much that they are struggle to tell me how much they actually had plates of food so they just eat it twice more than it should be and then the mm -hmm. one minute 
uh, after the second, third plate of food. Uh, I don't know <laughs> well, how much I had. I'm, maybe I'm full. So they're not even understanding if they are full or not. So because yeah, of yeah. this, it's also the weight problem is coming and all, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. That, 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 that's good. That's a good point, you know, because a mental organ is stomach. Okay, if you have nervous stomach, we start to compensate stress with eating non-consciously. Okay, just that's how to pile our food is actually is a big problem for Western world who is under stress and so on. You know, and all time business worry whatever just fast food. Always using word fast food, fast dying. Okay, yeah. and now we're having people who are kind of like they uh, uh, grasp this uh, fast food like is norm, like norm. You know, it's not norm. Or going, let's say, in a car and big, big, big uh, 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 cup of coffee, you know, and going in a car, driving coffee, boom, boom, you know, and uh, eating rubbish and stress, mind is somewhere there, physical body is here, spirit, who knows where, it's emotions, who knows there, they are all, all over the place, okay, and during the meal, when you're supposed to put them all to be aligned, okay, again, it's same habit, okay, and plus of all, wrong food. And what to expect later on, we're getting, uh, if we are young, we're getting uh, uh, bad habits and they build up later on. Uh, they're getting prone to injuries, uh, we're getting uh, sicknesses, we're getting uh, some symptoms, we're getting uh, issue with sleep. Sleep is very important for every sportsman, everybody actually, because during sleep, we recharge our batteries. If, if we don't sleep very well, I don't know what we expect next day, you know, because we're driving car without uh, full charge batteries. Okay, that's how body works too. And we need to learn this little, puzzles and, and it's very, very important for young people to understand these puzzles, simple uh, to put them together and to be trained and, and to put them in order to function. Because they, on that way, all talent, talents and everything that they have inside could shine, come on surface, okay? Because that's, they, they'll just do a game, you know, not, not only all these things, which is the kind of like building house, everything will shine later on. And, and, and when I met Novak, you know, he was already, uh, uh, diamond okay but i polish it a little bit <laughs> okay polish it to be shiny diamond okay mm -hmm. and he's already kind of like investing a lot of time working training whatever doing but kind of these little puzzles there 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 are there making nice beautiful shiny diamond <laughs> okay and now we're enjoying seeing him how he's playing you know and, and i'm happy happy that he is start to bring awareness in other sport people here in the world because he was name and he's still name he's still star Okay, and, and people start to think a little bit. We have this puzzle, okay, food is important for me because you now I eliminate gluten and whatever, da, da, da. And I, let's go to try for a while. And can you imagine now 10 years after you find me, you know, and it's, it's talking about gluten, you know? <laughs> and how many, how many millions of people actually, they contact me, some hundreds of people, you know, after this, to the email of finding me, they just just thank you, Dr. Igor, because I learned about you, that Novak Joko changed gluten, I changed gluten in my life and I start to be better. You know, and actually, I'm happy, like like practitioner, like medical doctor, that I I was in ability to spread beautiful information around, to not be selfish and jealous about certain information. I like to help people, you know, and just enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I share this information, and really was beautiful to see how people they start to improve from one year to the other year, to have let's say in these tournaments they had this on quarantine you know, on on uh, restaurants. Okay, and for one year was some kind of food. Next year was kind of like options. We have gluten-free, lactose-free, whatever, da, 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 more, more, this, more that, you know. And it start to be awareness about it, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and now new generation growing up, growing up, I think they're growing up with some, some options. Now, okay, I need to a little bit to care about it. And of course, personal, personalities and everything, and you know, need to be put together. But it's uh, good uh, that, that, that we are able to share this information as we do today. today. Yeah. But it's amazing what impact you had and still have, Dr. Eagle, because I mean, it's 10 years like, later, like you said, and he, those habits, he's, he's still persisting with those habits. Um, so it's, it's good to see that. And, and what I often think when thinking about how we eat, it's not really about self-discipline i find it's more about it's not a lack of self-discipline it's more about a lack of awareness like you said hey and yes, yes, um, yes. and if we actually take that time like you said if we're not in the stressed state not in our sympathetic nervous system where we're running away from a tiger and having to jump over a wall or fight something digestion is not priority when we're in our stressed state mm -hmm. right so we need to yeah. go into that 
parasympathetic nervous system where we can rest and digest. And obviously, if we absorb our nutrients, we will absorb our nutrients better um, when we do that. And that will up our performance if we have more nutrients, right? Definitely, so, um, yes, let's let's come back to, to, you just mentioned about taking gluten and dairy from, from Djokovic's diet. So this is a food sensitivity, right? So maybe you can explain to us the difference between a food sensitivity and a food allergy, and then also what food sensitivities could have, what effect it could have on, on sports performance. Yeah, that's 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 good a question, you know, because even medical doctors they are they 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 are not um, aware about these uh, levels of reactivity, sensitivity, reactivity, and allergy in real meaning. When I'm teaching my students, you know, about it, and I try them kind of always give them picture as I'm doing today, and uh, see see it like uh, like steps. Okay, sensitivity is lower, like like let's say like a like fire. This uh, lower step is a fire without smoke. Second is a reactivity, little fire with little smoke, and allergy is big flame. You know, big ob obvious things. Let's say when you're eating something and getting bloated, that's you are in this third step. But something that is always giving you trouble, but you have no idea what's going on is on first level and, and something between. Sensitivity, reactivity, allergy, real meaning. And sensitivity is one uh, most uh, hidden uh, trigger for our health because it's not obvious, okay? But we are able now to detect it, okay? To see with different kind of checkups and so on, these levels and where they are. Of course, if you know, if you're getting bloated, we can go a step backward and to see what we eat and start to eliminate the stuff and it'll be much easier. But this one, which is kind of something is bothering us, but we have no idea why we're always tired, why we cannot perform very well, why we are not focus very well, whatever. We need to kind of detect it, okay? And we have different kind of uh, uh, tests and so on to do it so and to observe for a while and eliminate certain food and only find the right petrol for your engine, okay? That's how, People are getting kind of wow, said, what's going on? And I'm feeling now much better. I'm feeling fresh in the morning. I can focus very well in school or in, in or in sport, or whatever. I'm I kind of easy perform, I'm more flexible. You know? And also, as I mentioned, holistic approach is also is nutrition and mental and emotional and the physical body and social issues around all, all them making this beautiful piece of puzzles if you if you understand them and start to match them and start to create this beautiful picture, we are able to be kind of like in position to perform and to be in good shape. Exa example of, about um, this, uh, like, like you mentioned earlier about bless your meal and be grateful. It's investment of three seconds. If you have three meals per day, that's nine seconds per day. You know, it doesn't ask kind of hours to meditate or whatever to be, just to be aware. Okay, be grateful and thankful. And if people, they get this habit, Okay, they can see different in month time. You know, just eat away. Eat, eat, <laughs> as I said, we mentioned talk. We talked about earlier. They said uh, how we eat. You know, don't eat you know, on couch. Okay, eat on the table. Okay, couch is kind of like we're getting in a very uncomfortable position, throwing food in ourselves. You know, mind is watching TV, whatever. You know, is not right. Okay, just keep table like holy place, you know, going there, invest three seconds. <laughs> you, know, you can be, you, even if, you, in, if you're in a plane, in train, in, in, you know, just be three seconds with your meal. Recognize color, recognize shape, recognize smell, detect smell, uh, uh, touch it. Okay, all these sensors getting triggers for our mind, that's food. And, every, and, that, and after our, our brain start to send proper information further on. That's the investment of three seconds, three times nine seconds. If you like, snuck few, 12 seconds. <laughs> That's I talk about major investment, okay, in seconds, okay. <laughs> and if you know what to put, you know, wow, people say, what's going on? What's happening in my life? Yeah. Okay. It's just little awareness and applied knowledge. That's a piece of puzzle. Be aware of what you're eating and how you're eating. Ta -da. And we have today, uh, biggest issue, biggest issue, youngsters and uh, Western now and Boris now, with the young people who come in now, they are kind of like uh, tablet guys, you know, telephone guys, you know, and that's the beginning of allergy. <laughs> okay, yes. that's the beginning of allergy. 
That's beginning of asthma. That's the beginning of any kind of issues later in life because we are not aware what we're eating. When they have no time, they're watching something and eating. Just be aware about simple things. And that's going in a good direction. Changing habit, and we always, as I mentioned earlier, said we need to teach young people why they're doing so. Not because I like to. I like to impose on you because I'm smart, I'm kind of like I'm a doctor and I'm a coach or whatever. You need to teach them to, it's good for them to grow up to be healthy and happy. That, that's very universal. Why I'm doing so? Because I make mom, my mom happy because I eat my meals every day. No, no, no. Doing for yourself to be healthy and happy. Okay, that's, and I'm sharing my knowledge and giving you some, some insights what you can do in the right time in your development. Because when you're building up house in the wrong, wrong foundation, on the end we build up of the walls and, 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 and the roof crash very easy if it's not strong foundation. Mm. And particularly working with young people, as we are responsible adults, we can teach them. And if they like to, if they're keen to learn or we can show them by examples what we're doing, they can grow up nicely, you know, with, with less suffering, as they say in Buddhism. <laughs> less <laughs> suffering. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not easy, right? So I've had many clients who are asked to explore, you know, just take out their gluten or some other food intolerance that they might have. And the, the, the main question I usually get is, but, but what's left to eat? You know, if I can't have dairy and gluten, what else can I have? You know, and that's kind of, it's, it's quite sad that there's so many other things to uh, eat as that, well, that, but that, that's that, the mindset. Uh, that's a mindset and, and actually is good to expand in the wrong direction this question because people they don't using brain okay and and really brain is very uh, important uh, part of body to train okay <laughs> but uh, five percentage of population using brain 95 imitate life okay and this very common is what to eat stuff okay and they say well now we live, example i'm now in cyprus we have beautiful island Good economy, you know, not poor, not poor, poor people around. And when they asking me this question, I said, okay, ask me one more time. Same question, but please use your brain. So what? One more time, please. You know, and I train them to, I teach them to repeat this question a few times until they crack. So now you're asking me like a little kid, and you are adult of 30, 35, what to eat? Okay. And if I put you now, just in our neighborhood here in Syria, it's just 200 kilometers from us, same question, how will vibrate with you? What to eat? Okay, these poor people have no chance to eat because it's, we have war for decades, okay? Suffering, they are big, okay? They're destroyed and they, they're just happy to have something and you have options and you are just spoiled ass. <laughs> Use your brain, you know, go a little bit, search around, you know? And people, they need to be, to use the brain a little bit, you know. I can give them some directions, okay. But people, they are generally spoiled. Imitate life, okay. Just kind of Many like juniors. one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah. They don't Many like you. juniors them. also are not, uh, are not eating vegetables and other good stuff, you know. They are not prepared for this somehow. And so sometimes they say the question when I talk with them, they have the same question, what, what to eat? There is nothing to eat. There is nothing left. <laughs> <And> <laughs> And also for them, and nothing, uh, nothing to eat. Uh, in question that I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this, uh, I don't like anything except uh, sausages, uh, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. and, uh, whatever. Yes, <laughs> that's also in trouble. Yeah. Well, that that I think that brings up a good point about um, you know when you say Vesna that uh, you know kids or juniors don't like or even adults. So I don't like this, I don't like that. I think it, you know, we talked about. Um, ability or, or desire to learn and find out new things and stuff like that for an athlete that are like no like they were open to it they learn you know they're willing to go out and, and search and research and but that's one thing and and then also you, you can have an athlete I've had athletes that, that are curious and you know give me a book about this give me a book about that tell me about this they want to know but then once they have the knowledge the question is how far they're willing to step out of their comfort zone now to yeah. implement this stuff, you know, and that's that's what that's that's another issue is for all of us, not only athletes. You know, how far are you willing to, or what you what are are you willing to sacrifice? I'd say, you know, to become 
a better person, healthier person, better athlete. And uh, Vesna knows you have to sacrifice a lot, you know, to you know, be such a good player. And what what are you willing to do? And a lot of people are not a lot of athletes also are not willing to to go that far. You know, they'll you know, I'll yeah. I'll eat this and I won't eat that. I don't like that. I'm not willing to go that far off. I'll do my fitness maybe, but I won't do a full hour and a half. I'll do an hour. So they ca- get, get cal- calculated <laughs> of how much they're willing Yeah, it's to all do. the time calculation yeah. is going. I don't want to do this exercise. It's, it's, uh, I don't like it. Right. And then you start to explain that, no, you need to do And sometimes for me, it's, uh, as a coach, sometimes it, it feels hard because uh, for me, it was no, even, uh, no need for explanation, not that much. You know, I was like, okay, I need to do this. I do it. I don't like it. doesn't matter. I do it because I need to do it. And <laughs> now it's too much of... Uh, I don't want. <laughs> yes, and it That's wasn't exactly. easy for Djokovic either, right? Because I mean, his parents owned a pizza restaurant, so it was <laughs> gluten and dairy all the way. So, but he exactly. was motivated to succeed, and he cut out the gluten and the dairy and all of that, and he felt immediate benefits. That's the nice thing about it, you know. You are going to see the benefits, and he said that he felt he felt lighter, he felt more energetic. He slept better than before. And I remember him explaining that he could see the court in a clearer way. I mean, that is gold. Yeah. I, I, will, I, will, I will give you a hint to understand, you know, because uh, not having knowledge in, in different fields of medicine, for me, it was like one by one, too, you know, logical thing. Because if you're eating, a, knowing all organs, they control, they're controlling some other part of bodies, let's say, liver controlling eyes, okay? And if you're eating wrong food, Okay, and wrong food getting absorbed and getting our circulation and getting stuck in liver. Mother organ, which is liver for eyes, getting also clogged. Okay, and it's not enough energy for eyes. Okay, you know, you kind of you have energy, but it's not good enough. If you're getting a little bit foggy, murky, whatever there, you know, better, a lack of focus. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's for me, it's one by one, too. You know, that's kind of if you're clearing petrol and liver happy, eyes are happy. Okay. And I'm seeing kind of you have happy eyes, best have happy eyes, Boris has happy eyes because we eat it properly. Okay. And that, that's how it is. And that's the hobby reading people. When the people coming to me and opening door, I have I have immediately 80% idea what's going on, just seeing them, you know, because we projecting our health, we vibrate our health. Okay, we cannot pretend I'm healthy. Yes, you are, yes, you are not. <laughs> that's it. You can be maybe tired or whatever, but that's kind of how we project, you know, and you can see people uh, on the sport, the dragging records, you know, around that is, is, you know, that drained out. Mm-hmm. And then we need to teach them how to charge batteries, how how maintain them, mm-hmm. okay? How to keep them in, in a high level and not drain them totally, okay? And so on and so. There's a lot, lot of puzzles, but well, people who are to King, we can offer like professionals from different backgrounds, uh, right information. Okay, and then and I said, let's go to for a while with this. You can see how it's working for you. And just do it what we think is good for you. Okay, and if you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, you know, that's bad luck. <laughs> yeah. I want us to well, I think to... We're... Oh, go ahead. You know. No, I just wanted to say, you know, speaking about um, athletes that that have issues, right, and and or just generally people that Igor treats or. Uh, or you treat that have that have certain issues that are that are really visible. Or, um, they 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 see results a lot quicker, like Novak did. But there are, there are athletes that that have been eating badly for a while, for a long time, or maybe they take habits from home or you know certain things um, that know they need to be eating better and they start doing it. But they 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 don't have issues necessarily. But they and they're still young and so they can compensate a lot of stuff those are the ones that have a more difficult time. It takes a little longer for them, from what I understand. Maybe you can correct me. It takes yeah, yeah. a little bit longer to see the results. And, and that's, you know, and they'll, they'll go a month on a new diet, let's say, and they'll say, I, I'm, I'm not seeing results. And it's easy for them to give up. Um, I don't know. Maybe you have some advice for those people. That, or... That's uh, very important is to motivate them, you know, and uh, to see uh, how they're g- grasping it. Because if they're motivated properly, Okay, and to establish goals together. Okay, and so let's go to climb a mountain. You know, if it's top of mountain, our goal. Okay, we cannot go like like lift very straight ahead. You know, go through the forest. Let's go to zigzag. You know, to see where we are. We have kind of issues. Let's go to 
kind of pass these issues around mountain, you know. And but you always need to climb, climb. And if it's not an obstacle, the obstacle is there something to learn. What is obstacle? Let's go to make definition of it and go further. Okay. And if it's top there and we have goal there, let's go to go there. But it's not always clear. Okay, I'm doing one one thing, you know, for mountain done. Okay. But you can see what's what's obstacles around. You know, we have social issues, biggest stuff in tennis, social issues, you know, pressure around. You have kind of kids they're coming from generally our sport that we are talking about today, they're coming kids with quite some money there, you know, and they're spoiled. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> okay. Yes. Most of them. And all my parents they say, okay, I will pay for the coach, I will pay for this, I will pay for that, and you will care about him. And kid is just kind of like lazy butt, you know, that doesn't like to move anything, you know, just kind of a little bit, oh, okay, if it's a bit pressure, I don't like it, you know. But everybody looking about with top top on the road, you know, and uh, with all the habits which are not even basics. But we need to motivate and talk with parents. Very important, you know, maybe they are pushing them to be in that sport for own reason. Okay, because that's a uh, own idea because they, they like to be tennis players in life. They didn't manage very well and they all pressure putting on kids who are not even talented to be tennis player. Okay, and they, the crushing spirit of kid on beginning and they're losing kids. Okay, and a few times uh, I had this experience to, to talk with kid and I said, and I've seen what's going on there and, uh, and I ask uh, parents to go out from my office, you know, to, to have coffee somewhere there and to come in half an hour. And I talk with kid. I said, do you really like to play tennis? He said, no, crying, you know, boom, you know, because they like it and da, 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 da. And I talk with parents later on. I said, okay, okay, now, kid, go out, sit there. I said, well, do you like to lose this beautiful person? You know, your kid, you are very good to lose it, okay? Because she started in maths, in poets, in singing, in playing, whatever, something in life, but you're pressurizing your idea and imposing on this beautiful human being your ideas about life. You can support it, but not impose. Because when the time comes, kids will run away from home. Okay, just kind of don't like this pressure anymore. But we need to be very tactful how to present this information and to put them to be functional. And I always asking people who come into me, visit me, said, particularly in sport, they said, do you like to be successful or happy? Okay, because the street, you can, see, you can see IQ person. <laughs> how much, how, how, how deep they are, okay? And of course, you know, somebody's stuck with this successfulness. I like to be the best in the world, fine, okay? But I, I said, I said, I gave you options, okay? I know a lot of people who are successful, but not happy. What now? To be alone, to use drugs, alcohol, what, you know? To buy 10, 10 cars, no. <laughs> what is what is goal in life, okay? Or kind of like, let's go to create this happiness on daily daily basis. Okay, certain happiness, they are always little, little fresh air in our life, you know, on daily basis. And to bring this happiness to carry all what we're doing daily, because training is tough, okay? We need to do certain things, but this daily happiness will create a good base to be happy and successful at the same time. And what is a successfulness, we don't know. No, but let's go to work on this happiness. We know what is happiness, okay? And slowly, slowly build up this beautiful strength, st strength in, in, in personalities of young people. Okay, when they're getting older, they can recognize, oh my God, what we did in our training, we're making these jokes, we're doing this, I have a very good trainer and I have my good background and I'm a solid person. Okay, you know, because it's kind of us, it's a very responsible job to do it. So in my field, the Western field, the Boris field, different approach, but the same coming to the happiness. Okay, same coming happiness. We can share our knowledge, experience, and so on, but we like to create an atmosphere to make people happy. If they're happy, they're healthy. If they're healthy, they, they, they could be successful in something, somewhere. Well, speak, speaking of uh, social pressure and, and kids, uh, my wife and I have two little children, and now, you know, I, I, understanding that, that a lot of the habits come from home when you're young, and, and eventually, like you, Zina, you mentioned about Novak, um, his parents owning a, a pizza pizza place and obviously he he had some bad bad habits for him growing up and then eventually he had to make a big change which is much tougher to do later on right obviously when you when you raise your kids a certain way and, and maybe with certain habits uh, a good good habits i'd say or whatever you think are good habits it's easier for them to kind of continue on that path right so 
that's the constant struggle obviously like you know i, I like to eat healthy and we eat as much organic stuff as we can and so you know we we don't allow our kids to eat certain things we try to kind of guide them but it's it's the social pressure stuff you know <laughs> when they go play with other kids and go to these birthdays and you see what, what most of the kids are eating it you know they our kids are kind of cast aside that's uh, so it's it's another another issue, but I mean maybe not relevant to this topic at the moment, but it just uh, it has a lot to do with the upbringing and habits. That that's it, you know, because uh, uh, kids they are kind of imitating parents, you know. Okay, monkey see, monkey do. You know, if you think of the wrong way, they'll be, if you behave the wrong way, or they will do the same way. You know, that's kind of and, and as you work on yourself more, kids they will accept it by time, okay? Because it's gonna be not something allowed, it's not allowed, you know, that's we have not, we, for example, eating junk, you know, don't buy junk, okay? Don't have it at home, you know, no issue because it's not at home, <laughs> it's simple, you know? You kind of, if you're telling kind of uh, uh, Coke is bad for you and buying Coke in this fridge is a temptation, okay? It's like drug, okay? It's around, you know, it's, it's accessible, but don't buy it finito. <laughs> Easy, simple, simplify things. You know, I, I'm I'm good in simpli simplify things. You know, because I don't like to complicate things because they're not complicated. Simplify. It. Don't eat it. Don't buy it. Finish. <laughs> that, that's, buy what is around. And example, sugars very important. You know, sugars they are one of these big issues today. This biggest drug I think in the world, sugars, white sugar. Okay, we need to kind of just have good sugars. You know, that's they are fruits. Put fruits on table to be there, okay. And if kid likes kid likes something sweet, give them banana, give them orange, give them apple, give them something. And when they're getting habit of it, no problem, okay. If they, if they get some kind of very sweet chocolate or sweet coke or something later, maybe yuck, because the threshold is different, okay. If you teach them threshold is very high, like like the drug, always they're looking for this, you know. But if it's threshold here, they're happy. Okay, that, that's uh, ex to be like example, like parents, you know, a responsible parent, not become a torturous one, but responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I, 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 can, I can add that, for example, many people are very surprised that uh, I don't like uh, Coke or all this soda stuff and all the things, but uh, I, uh, it's true, I, I don't like the taste. I don't like it uh, because I didn't drink it for for very, very, very long period. And in one second, I, I tried it, you know, it was interesting. Uh, and I took it like, ah, it, it's impossible to drink it. How you drink it? <laughs> so, <laughs> it, 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 in, and for example, about kids, uh, when I change, when I try to change uh, habits of, for example, of my players, uh, first I have to change habits of my, of their parents, <laughs> actually. So <laughs> first of what I do, I talk, of course, with, uh, with kids, but I also talk with parents and, um, and the first thing which we are trying to do is to change their habits and maybe to take away all the sweet stuff and uh, some raw foods that uh, they have less less opportunities to to see it and to have it, and then uh, they start to get used a little bit to these uh, things. Of course, they go to the birthday or they go somewhere yeah. to determine they run with their friends to the shop and they buy it. But uh, on, for example, just one week ago, for example, um, I, had a, I have a player who doesn't like vegetables. Absolutely no vegetables in, in, in her life, I would say. And then uh, maybe I was talking with her, I was talking with parents and it's a long story, but one week ago, she went finally to eat uh, broccoli soup. You know, I told her, oh, you know, let's go eat together. It's tasty and uh, let's just try it, you know. And then she was eating. Oh, it can be tasty. I didn't know. <laughs> I want to ask my mom to make a pumpkin soup, soup now. So so it's for her, it was an adventure, you know. But uh, I had to talk with her. Maybe it was months, you know. It was months for me to work and to fight um, that she started to eat some vegetables, you know. And finally... <laughs> After months of working, <laughs> she started to eat broccoli soup and pumpkin soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of is 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 a house a very responsible position to be like you, like coach, and and to find a way to present these little gems, you know, on a way to be quote mark digestible again, you know, and to not become like obstacle, but let's go to try, let's go to play with, you know, 
just see and, and all, very good also to young people to say if you, if you tell them well don't eat kind of cake their cake they are good for you they are full of sugar whatever I said forever <laughs> the question is forever I said no it's not forever but now when you're having kind of holidays or once per week you know whatever you can enjoy it it's no problem but if you if you if you think every single day imagine yourself like a cup okay like like my cup here. If every single day you're eating some wrong junk, junk and building up, building up, building up, building up, and you're on here on edge, and these toxins spill out, that's your symptom, your tiredness, your weakness, your, your injuries, and so on. But mm -hmm. if, it, if it's uh, only once per week or once in 10 days, some chocolate cookies, whatever, body can handle it, okay? But if every day you're on edge and it's, you're prone to injuries and say, ah, okay, I understand, okay? It's not against you, but understand to be master of own habits, okay? Mm -hmm. We need the cakes, okay? So, but it's not every single day in New Year, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we, we, need, we need sometimes, you know, some little re relaxation or something, you know, some sweets and so on. And for us adults, we need some drinks and wine and so on. <laughs> but <it's, laughs> if, you, if you eat a cake every day, you drink wine every day, of course you'll be issues. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. matter of balance, I think. And also, um, like you said, Vesna, it's weird how many people have this preset idea of no. I, he, he hasn't even, even tasted the soup, but he, he just decided, no, I'm not having veggies, you know? So they've got this preset idea that no, healthy eating is bland. Healthy eating is boring. You know, I'm not going to enjoy it. Well, when they first start or when they actually do some put some effort into preparing the food then it could be amazing and like you said with the coke then healthy food actually starts to taste even better you don't want those things anymore um yeah. but i want i want us to just go into a bit more like practical options so what what do you find what is your definition of a healthy diet, Dr. Eagle? So I know that the Djokovic, um, we all know that he follows a gluten and dairy-free diet and he also cuts out most of his sugar. It seems like he also um, is almost tending more towards a plant-based diet um, with occasional fish and white meats, but a lot of nuts and seeds and healthy oils. Um, yeah, could you give us a, a, maybe a bit more detail? And also, Vesna and Boris, what do you find? Um, is the best diet or the best way of eating that you would suggest? Okay, let's, let's actually I'll start from my point of view. That's, uh, this diet doesn't exist, the best one, okay? But we need to first to see, uh, uh, to check person. After checkup and, and observation after a while, we can see what is matching for certain person. Of course, different kind of sport, different kind of music of energy. Example, my sportsman who doing golf and doing tennis, they are different kind of music of energy. Person who doing archery or, you know, <laughs> is, is more mental energy and focus and relaxation and calmness and breathing and so on. But you need to feed them differently, okay? And uh, if there's something, a weight lifter, you know, of course, they need different kind of uh, sort of energy and, uh, and different kind of strength. One of, just to give you one joke, you know, because uh, this just came to mind. Uh, when I just start to work with Novak, you know, and, and, and I came in this world, which is new things for me, and I'm seeing people, they're pumping idea, kind of like, like you mentioned, what is the best idea everybody follow, doesn't work, okay? And I'm seeing it doesn't work, you know, and I like to present it on a way people, they can understand why. And uh, I, what I said, Novak, I said, I said observe yourself like a like dog, okay? And we have in dog world, you're like Doberman, okay? Skinny one, you know, very you know, powerful, very fast, whatever. But other side, let's say like Nadal is like a Rottweiler, okay? Okay, but, but, but they are both, the dogs, they are okay, okay? But we need to feed this guy with other food, this guy with other food, okay? Because you need to understand construction of body also, okay? And uh, through this construction and observation, we can start to build up what is necessary to keep in, in on optimum. But need a little bit of time to build up this to find the right things, how they're using energy, how they're spending energy, how much time recovery they need, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so this we can find like like walking and talking business. Okay, we need to kind of like process. Not only kind of come here to see what this allergy go, kick gluten out and everything's fine. Doesn't work because you all these piece of puzzles creating some profile of some sportsman 
and to see what's going on there and how to do it so and when to do it so let's say to increase more calories when reduce the calories when it recovery time when to eat how to eat okay when to eat is very important because i mentioned earlier key time for recovery is night time okay if they have good sleep you can imagine i think body Sylvester have more experience with this because they were professional players you know they don't sleep okay because their body is just destroyed you know physically mentally emotionally whatever and you have performance next day you know and you're missing deep relax relaxation and allowed every single cell to recharge and you're putting exact example wrong food inside bomba <laughs> okay and next day injury okay and that, that's very very important for example to understand this i'm seeing it this uh, tennis world people they have this um, Medical uh, uh, touches, how you call them? What is it? Kinesio. Kinesio tape. Oh, kinesio yes, tape, yeah. Yes, tapes, yeah. They're putting them kind of shoulders and elbows on this and that. And actually, that's all this projecting of organs. Okay, example shoulders here on front part is projection of large intestine. Okay, this acupuncture meridian. Okay. Backside of shoulder is small intestine. Of course, if you have toxins for a long time in, in your guts, they will come here. And you're pr pressurizing this part of body by your sport and crack. Okay. <laughs> if it's that, the other part of body, I know it's which organ is disturbed and I'm doing my checkups. They're proving me always 100%. What's going on there? We can find toxicity. We are finding uh, mental, emotional issues that are linking with organs and so on. We start to kind of like clarify the clear situation, start to build up knowledge, start to build up these pieces of puzzles what you need to do it. Example, coffee. Coffee is common things in, in sport. In the morning, I think, and you know, like I was shocked, you know, coffee, orange juice, you know, hamburgers, <laughs> you know, coffee with these foamy things, you know, on top, you know, this kind of like, and boom, everything in, in intestines, you know, the stomach eating very fast and now going to have training, you know. Of course, there will be explosion in, in, in stomach, you know, body will explosion in intestines and they start absorb all these toxins in. in. And of course, there'll be some injuries later on if, if it starts to be hard, of course. But it's good for me to start to, to, to clarify on the beginning that it's not good for you, it's bad for you, this one. You can, can I eat meat? Of course, it's good for your system, it's okay meat. But for the other body, well, for somebody else, it's not good meat because a different kind of body, giving a different kind of uh, blood and so on, different genetics on the end. Okay. And we need to find all these puzzles and start to put them together. Okay, that's my professional part, you know. And you know, through your perspective, uh, Boris told me that's kind of when he was very young and he's still young, okay, <laughs> but very young. Oh, okay, thank and you. he, he was in the States and playing and so on, you know, and it was very perspective. He's a tall guy, good service, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But he got injured, you know, because nobody prepared him properly. And he told me later on that, uh, that I kind of I learned from his, from his experience, okay, what, what is important for tennis player to do before match, before, after match, you know, all stretching, all warm-ups, all this, because kids, they're getting lazy, you know, nobody teaches them to do it, so. Yeah, exactly, that's what, I mean, unfortunately, unlike Vesna, I, I had to uh, finish my career, uh, not on my terms so much, um, because of an injury, but yeah, it, 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 it mostly happened because of lack of knowledge, and I didn't have enough, good, good enough guidance from uh, coaches and other uh, people uh, around me to you know to teach me how to prevent the injury hopefully and how to eat well which is all you know all a part of it so that's uh that's unfortunate so one you know after that i, I went to coaching and 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 uh, look you know having learned my my uh example i you know i try to now learn as much as i can about it to help others to prevent prevent injuries and eat well and Hopefully, yeah. you know, have kids uh, help kids have long careers. That's a uh, that's a uh, uh, prevention is highest medicine. Uh, highest medicine is prevention. You know, that's that's uh, not kind of like a symptom curing things. You know, of course, if we need to do it sometimes, but the prevention is highest medicine. Okay, and and uh, we, I can through my knowledge, experience, and what I'm doing in my life, I can see these weaknesses. Okay, and put them in awareness of person say well this have a weak point here if you push button there it's only a question of time certain things will happen okay but if you have good times here okay work on it 
you know, maintain it, but we let's go to work all together and make it together. You know, and these puzzles they need to work, work together. I always, I always presenting and these puzzles is easy to remember, like like fingers, like physical body, mental body, emotional body, spiritual body, social factors. Okay. And we need to make them together to be functional, like 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 strings on guitar. Okay, it's not gonna like work on one string only and ignoring other. Okay. If you're trying to play harmony or some tones or some whatever, it doesn't work. But if we start to work on, on tune up of between these strings, okay, and start to be aware about them first and start to work on them, we have ability to have a nice, beautiful song on the end. Okay, that, that's how it's good to understand and, and to present for young people also, because they think only can I working hard, I will mean, be very good. How many kids in this moment playing hard and how many will be just disappointed in life, you know, or getting injured in life or getting, you know, in own troubles, okay? Because they don't think about these strings on the right time. And you, like coaches like Vesna and Boris, they are now in excellent position to teach who like to learn, who keen to learn, okay? And who is not, well, that's, that's part of life. At least we are trying hard <laughs> <laughs> and giving them chances. <laughs> yes, 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 of course. So there's well, no... I think it, oh, oh, here we go again. <laughs> Sorry. Our <laughs> <laughs> timing is just off. <laughs> no, go ahead. You go, you go first. You go. No, I just think that, you know, what you're saying is there's no one size fits all. Um, so if the moment someone is telling you, like, this is the way to eat for everyone, you should know, like, you know, red light should flicker because this is, that's not okay. You're a... Um, individual and you are going to need a personalized approach right um but are there any basics like you know like you said eating real food or organic food or um like you said how you're eating anything anything any tips you could give us um, well, tips tips for everybody uh because uh, as we know uh, vitamins they are very important for because if you if you divide Word vitamins we mean uh, vita means vital amines okay they're giving us a vita is life life amines okay we need life vitamin okay and that's uh, as much as we could we can take them from the fruits and vegetables okay of course not to be sprayed or something you know as, as if you can choose it choose it if you cannot well that's less chance to have a good one but uh, if you're having smoothies in the morning Okay, smoothies kind of like uh, people asking me which kind of smoothies. Well, just satisfy your eyes. Okay, different colors. Okay, whatever you're finding on the market, fresh, put different colors orange, red, green, yellow, whatever. Put in smoothie, put some su supplements inside, let's say like spirulina, which is good mineral. Okay, okay, and you're having enough life force to maintain your day. Okay, you need also some proteins, you need some calories. Okay. Depends what you like, you know. And I, I always, uh, I always ask you, don't eat too much in the morning before training. And okay, after training, when your body relax, you can eat stronger meals, but not before trainings. Mm -hmm. You can always take some carbs, or carbs that can be different source of carbs because they're also changing it in the metabolism to use during the trainings. I always recommend use carbs quite easy to digest, like let's say rice. Rice is very common, easy to find, okay? And it's good rice with some vegetables, with some light meat or something. Let's say like salmon or, or, or some eggs, okay? But not big stuff, you know? And, and minerals, you're getting uh, through the smoothies, vitamins from smoothies, you're having some carbs, you're having some proteins. And when you're going to training, take some snacks, you know? Some nuts. Uh, when you're going to training, feast of nuts. When you're living training, Fits of nuts, okay. You can take some also some dry fruits with you to have it, you know, that's kind of also to have some kind of good sugars to have it during the uh, day. Uh, very good is, and I, I always recommend if you have a chance to have some vegetable soup, like as I mentioned, broccoli soup, pumpkin soup, you know, they're very uh, good preparation for our digestion. Okay, they prepare our intestine and stomach to receive, let's say stronger food after. Okay. Also, fresh salads, they're very important, you know, to have it with meal, but soup is not big amount, small amount, just preparation. And universal thing, universal thing, 
don't drink cold things during the meal. Underline, advice, very common. People are getting hot, hot mark because they're training and they're eating in cold water, bum. What's happening in stomach? Food getting congested, okay? All enzymes getting stuck and food are getting unprepared intestines and we making trouble. Drink cold water before meal, fine, but not during meal, not after meal. That's universal thing, okay, for sport people. And of course, uh, avoid ice stuff, you know, that's, if you have cold, talking about cold water, I mean body temperature. Ice water is just a little bomba for intestines and, and they just kind of everything explode there, you know. That's the reason why we're having a lot of sick people in the States, you know. Everywhere you're going, there are people there in the restaurant, somebody's on your shoulder with cold water to, to eat more. <laughs> because cold water pushing food in inside, you know, pushing fast, undigested, you know, that's people, obesity is biggest issue in the States. Okay, because they have cold water, plus wrong food, of course. That's universal things to know. And don't eat late, very important. Try to finish your meal seven, eight o'clock. Not, sometimes of course we can be escape, you know, some dinner or something, but don't eat late. Okay. And it's kind of allowed body to rest and digest and have good sleep. Example, we have experience, we are all the people, <laughs> okay. We said we're going out, you know, we have some kind of friends and eating a little bit more or drinking more. And all night we're turning, 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 turning because our digestion could not digest, okay. It doesn't allow us our spirit to calm down. As I mentioned, spirit is very important. Okay, this part of us, but when we're having kind of wrong food, we're disturbing our physiology and later on physiology disturbing our spirit. When you're going to sleep, our spirit needs to be in ourselves, inside and in our heart to calm down. But imagine now eating wrong food in our stomach and liver getting hot, spirit always sleeping in heart, okay? And we have now barbecuing our heart with heat, okay? <laughs> and our heart is a little bit hot, okay? And the heat going up in our mind that we cannot calm down. That's how Chinese is seeing it, okay? Chinese medicine. And uh, as we know it, we can universally say, okay, don't eat late, don't eat heavy food late. Okay, that's universal things. Mm -hmm. I love it. Based on Boris, anything you want to add in terms of eating while on tour, what's important? From my side, well, uh, go ahead, man. Uh, no, man, from I my side, it's... nothing to to add uh, because Igor said literally everything, <laughs> all the things which uh, actually I uh, I learned all these things uh, when I met uh, Igor because I exactly I did everything what he said not to do, so uh, drinking cold during food. Uh, I had uh, lots of gluten, I had uh, lots of lactose and I had the uh, problems with this and I had uh, other other things. So, and uh, I can say that uh, actually, if you try to change these habits, even these main th uh, things, uh, they're working pretty fast. It's just a question of um, wanting, I, I think. And uh, maybe in two or three weeks, maybe one month, you will start to get used to this. And, uh, you know, I think uh, our body is, uh, is actually clever, even more clever than us. And uh, it gives us lots of hints which you should... Um, uh, hear and see. Sometimes in the morning you wake up with some pain out of nowhere and there is some hint that something you are doing probably wrong. And uh, then you have to switch on the brains to understand what, what was wrong <laughs> and why I have uh, some pain or whatever. And um, I can say that uh, body is, uh, when it, it starts to have chances to have a better life, uh, better foods, uh, better nutrition, so you start to feel better and uh, it's very easy to switch actually after. So the body is choosing always the better way for, for it. And the main thing is to our brains has to also to, uh, to get accepted this better life, <laughs> let's say like this. Yeah, I is. agree, good, good point. I just wanted to uh, add that, um, you know, to, uh, for athletes, especially uh, who travel a lot and play a lot of tournaments all over the world, the biggest challenge is to, to be able to get a hold of good food while they're traveling. And, 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 and Noah, for example, now has a good routine because it's traveled to most, mostly the same places for many years now. And in every, every, every city that he goes to, he knows which restaurants to go to. And so a lot of times, obviously, he can afford to bring his cook with him and 
that's another level. But most most other athletes have to really step out of their comfort zone again. We talked about that and 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 learn how to prepare and think ahead and prepare their meal for the next day and prepare you know what they're going to eat right after practice stuff like that. A lot of a lot of a lot of athletes don't don't really they just kind of wing it. They go and uh, you know finish their, well, their right, practice yeah. and then. Then, then they're, oh, oh, it's 12 o'clock. Uh, I have another practice at three. I, I, what am I going to eat? I have to like, find a restaurant, you know? And so then they're, they're I'm prepared for this. And this is another thing that adds to their, I mean, a lot of them have to understand actually, that, and even juniors that are, they want to transition to professional sports, that this is their job. And they need to devote eight to nine hours a day, probably just like every, everybody else who goes to their office to work to work on their body, work on their mind, work on their nutrition and, and really, you know, use that time. And there's, you know, you can't really take breaks. You have to constantly think ahead and be prepared and work on yourself and, that, and preparing your food and, and a little, little meals and snacks is important, yeah. an important part of that. Yeah. That is very important. This preparation, you know, let's not understand that this part of the job, what they're doing. Okay, preparation is like to going to fix car, you know, putting petrol, putting this, putting that, you know, preparing for, for journey. Okay, we cannot drive without empty tank and you know, or without uh, checking tires and, you know, and oils and so on. We cannot do it so. But when they're getting concept and understanding why doing so, then start to getting in routine. There can be oscillation up and down, of course, not always ideal, but to keep, to keep keeping base, okay, and to keep it always like a strong foundation. Okay, going traveling in different areas, and of course we need to prepare as much as we could, okay, to be ready for certain time. And uh, also, uh, very important things that I like to share. I think is important um, to uh, build up this uniqueness because we are we are all unique. Okay, we all maybe we, we look like, but we have unique, unique need, uh, different needs in our lives, and we sl slowly start to distinguish what is there and what is necessary to work on. Okay, what is a weak point, what is a good point, and to be aware. And it's uniqueness is beautiful things. And I, I just like to re read you because it's going to be coming to close our, our talks very soon. But I read a recently beautiful word from uh, Oscar Wilde, but the, the beautiful sentence, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just beautiful, you know, you can be yourself, you know, you, you cannot be uh, Let's say in tennis, you cannot be Novak Djokovic, but you can observe, you can learn from something from them, from him, and learn from something from somebody else, from, from your grandmother or something else, learn from your father and mother something else, and put in your uniqueness to be functional, to be best of you, mm -hmm. you know. And it's beautiful, I said this, I just like it, you know. Everyone, everyone else is already taken, you know. If we start to imi imitate life, imitate certain people, all the time be losing ourselves okay and it's important to kind of be yourself enjoy life you know and just explore your journey you know and be open to learn no i love that um and um i, I think like you said we, we're all you know unique and um the the road to the top is not necessarily for everyone right like you all <laughs> um you need to put all of these pieces of the puzzle together and you need to put in the work. You need to get up each yeah. morning and prep your meals and plan your meals. And you need to, you know, check out what restaurants could actually provide the food that you want, you know. So there's a lot of effort and a lot of um, open-mindedness and a whole different perspective towards life that you need to have to be able to, yeah. to maybe get to the top, right? Um, yeah. And And... It's our second last question uh, before we you know, ask uh, or see if there's maybe someone in the audience who wants to also ask a question, but um, just in terms of you know, people wanting to enhance performance. So yes, that's also something I see a lot. So people are not having a proper, uh, they don't, you know, the nutrition is not great. They're wanting to train harder and harder. And then they want some type of supplement to help them because they're burning out most, most probably. So they need something. It could be anything from electrolytes, which are quite important to caffeine, to other weird supplements. So um, maybe you can tell us a bit more about this, if this is important, if you find that there is a role for these things. Um, and also just kind of a side note, um, what do you think, and I know it's difficult to give a percentage to this, but just to, to, <laughs> 
help the people out there understand what advantage could they be given if they are eating a proper, you know, diet, if they are following a proper diet? What percentage of advantage could it give them? And are these other supplements important? But that's, uh, that's difficult to put in percentage, but uh, I can say more than 50 percentage of whatever they do will be better, mm. you know, because uh, uh, talent is not enough to be the best or to, to be good in, in something, whatever you're doing, but talent is there to keep engine working, okay? But we need to saturate the engine with quote mark body <laughs> with the right things, okay? And everything could blossom, everything could be shiny, okay? But uh, trying, uh, trying the hard, I don't like hard, I trying smart, okay? That's kind of like we can achieve this, the best of ourselves, what we are, okay? And uh, that's percentage always is high. You could just kind of like uh, start to respect self, learn, 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 apply, 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 and you'll see what is best for you. With professionals like we are, we can add certain insights there and there, okay? What is necessary, what we're seeing is necessary through our experience and knowledge, and saturate this all needs for somebody to explode in, in uh, uh, talking, uh, uh, different, <laughs> uh, talking differently, but to explode, to, be, to manifest themselves. You know, to, to manifest is a better word uh, because everything is there, but we need to manifest if we prepare everything inside, everything the blossom and coming out like good seed. You know, seed never going out without uh, sun and good water and good soil. Okay, we'll stay there and we'll get it rotten. But if we have kind of good water, good soil, good sun, everything going out. Now it's springtime, Cyprus and everything going out. It's beautiful. But without without the soil, without water, without sun, rotten. <laughs> That's, we have a lot of talented people, you know, they are just, they are just talent. They are just a seed under, under dirt, you know, nothing. You know, and they will stay there, okay? Because they don't invest in all these little puzzles that we're talking about. Okay, they have no chance to blossom to put the best of themselves in life. Okay, and depends depends where they like to be. Okay, and we are not kind of to judge them. Okay, you are bad or good. No, no, that's your choice. Okay, but uh, if you like me, like ask me for opinion, I'll give you my opinion. What I think is good for you, I'm not kind of judging, but I think maybe. Let's go to try. The journey. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts on this, V9 Boris? Um, supplementation, electrolytes, caffeine. Well, I think it's I think it's important to have it with you. I think uh, uh, you know, obviously the good stuff. There's so so many so much um, so many different brands out there on the market. I think it's important to have it with you. You can't. There, there are certain things that you can't plan for. Sometimes you know your you know things change during your course of your day or schedule or matches sometimes last longer there's you know dr Igor mentioned all these uh, dried fruits and nuts and that's all, all good stuff and but you know sometimes circumstances don't allow you to prepare that stuff but you know a lot of times it's easier to have electrolytes or some carb drinks or something with you to give you extra energy i think m most athletes use it so it's not a it's not a bad idea i think it can help at certain certain times of the year or, you know when you're going through um uh, periodization and, and different and for example off season when you maybe you're training harder lifting more weights or stuff like that that you know it's not not a bad idea I don't think to sometimes with a healthy supplement you know I'll help your body a little bit but um, but I think with good nutrition you can get most of that stuff if you plan ahead and you hydrate well ahead of time and you can you can definitely prevent having to use it too much where you know a lot of athletes rely on it too much you know obviously they have all these shakers and powders and with them and constantly doing something it's you know probably lack of uh lack of preparation and and good nutrition mm. and boris while, while we while you're talking i want to i want to ask you um what role you think um the people around us play so you know there are many coaches listening uh, many trainers out there um, you know, what, what do you find are their role when it comes to the happiness or the success um, of the tennis player and what you and they them can do to ensure that, you know, you are helping the athlete and coaching them to really play their best game? 
Well, that's a that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that because that's one of the things that that we're doing at our at our tennis club, now our Novak tennis club, that he's really uh, trying to implement with with our athletes is to to have a good environment, and a good team around every player, and also to make sure that we customize. Like, like you said, it's not one fit for all for with anything. So we try to you know make sure that we customize uh, programs and trainings and food and everything for all the different athletes um but i think every every aspect of this holistic approach that novak is also trying to create in his you know club and future academy is that that um all, every part is important and so obviously putting experts in in good places to to care to to, to surround the athlete um obviously a good ex- experts in their field uh that's that's obviously a pre prerequisite pre- but um but i think uh, also could the communication has to be uh, uh, at a high level that's 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 one thing that we're working on now is you know putting all these people together you have to communicate well to make sure everything's working well but you know tennis for it's, it's a specific sport because it's uh it's an individual sport and a lot of, a lot of tennis players, you know, not everybody's the same. Some people like being social. Some people like, you know, being more introverted and depending on who's playing tennis, there are a lot of social, socially active people playing tennis. A lot of times you feel lonely on the tennis court and in practice and one-on-one with your coach and one-on-one with another person, maybe you don't get a lot of interaction and stuff. So, so going through these uh, hard trainings, uh, all, all these sacrifices that they go through, they need a good support system. For sure. So, it's important to have these people. Everybody plays a huge role. I mean, be, be, you know, parents also. Um, you know, and that's the biggest debate and in, and in, in with coaches and it is you know what what do you do with with parents? And parents can be um, great, and some can be a little more difficult, um, and which is normal. But uh, we don't blame anybody. Obviously, all the parents want the best for their kids, and so. I understand the more difficult parents, what they call, you know, that, the, you know, they, be, they want the best for their kids. And so, so another thing that we're trying to do is, is educate the parents uh, on how to, how to help their kids the best, the best possible way and with everything, with nutrition, with, with uh, preparation, with, you know, with, with advice, um, with leading by example, like what you talked about, you know, um, like Dr. Uger said, <laughs> monkey see, monkey too. Um, so yeah, you know, some parents have a hard time changing themselves first, and that we try to help with that. But also, ha- you know, helping parents understand what tennis is about, and that's another thing is you know the whole career of a tennis player goes go through changes. And then you're a good junior, and the next thing you know, if you're good, then you the next uh, the next step is maybe you know getting a sponsor, or signing with an agency, or you know, and then you have all these difficulties with you know. Uh, tra- traveling and co- and picking your coaches and all this stuff that comes with it is also important to educate the parents on. And 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 another thing that Dr. Igor mentioned is the parents that push their kids a little too much sometimes they mess up the relationship. And there's a lot of cases as you know and in all the sports, but tennis uh, tennis is also not an exception. Is that that eventually because of these. Um, well, the parents projecting their desires on their on their kids and pushing them too far. Maybe the kid will do something and get to a certain level because they have that you know push from behind. But I think the 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 relationship with between the in, within the family can really get um, suffer. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's also important to to present to the parents. If if you do these things, learning from other people and other athletes, and we're trying to interview more athletes now and and science players and other athletes to get feedback so we can present that to our our players is um is to learn on their experience good and bad right and and see where they are now and with their families and in their careers and stuff like that just to kind of give them facts and then they can run with it whichever way they want but you know we're not trying to impose anything on anybody but it's important for them to be informed and to help their player yeah, and I, I see that often as well. Parents wanting, they've got some unfulfilled dream and they really want their child to, you know, follow through with that. And like like Dr. Eagle said, it's not about imposing anything on them. You need to support them, yes, but do not impose anything on them. Right? Okay, so um, I want to touch on one last thing. Um, you know, Dr. Eagle, you said that um, when some when a patient comes to see you, you tell them, you know, you're not my patient, you're my friend, okay? And in this way, you ask them to take responsibility 
for their health, to take responsibility for their body, their mind, their spirit, you know. And yes, obviously, you are going to use all your knowledge. You are going to do the best, you know, all your best to help them. But in the end, it's their responsibility. It's their body, right? And, um, and that's something that I experience is a big issue today. People find that, you know, they want to go to a health professional or medical doctor and they want that person to fix them, right? Um, and they think that, um, you know, they can be passive participants um, and they will get some pills to help them feel better or they will get some surgery to feel better, but they're not willing to, to you know, stand up and do something about it. Like you said from the beginning, right? It's like, you need to be keen to learn. You need to be open. You need to do your meal prep. You need to take that's, action. That's a, that, that, that's a good point. You know, that's how is our medical system is uh, um, confused or how we better say we are trained to think on that way. I'm going to doctor to buy health. Okay. That's how we are trained to think. I'm going to health practitioner to buy something. You can't buy it. You can pay for something, but you need to kind of be part of it. Okay. And it's a... That's unfortunately that's how is all medical world in Western world or modern medicine or official medicine how you like to call it is trained on that way. I'm going to doctor to buy health. I'm giving everything in the hand of doctor to doctor will prescribe direct whatever da 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 da. And they will do nothing. If it doesn't work, come for next day for next pills. You know, next week for green one, week after for yellow one. You know, and we are just bouncing around. You know, with these uh, pills and chemicals and whatever, but we're never teaching people what they can do in simple way to change things, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I actually, I study more after my university than during my university. Mm -hmm. I have enormous knowledge there, but was not enough. And I'm searching for some insight. I move out of box, okay? Mm -hmm. And out of box, we can see things. When you're in a box, we, are, we just obey or prescribe medicine, okay? Try this one, try that one, try this one, try that one. We try to help, but it's not enough. And actually, we need to move out the box to see things holistically, okay? To see all these aspects that I mentioned earlier, you know, and so educate person, okay, or give them directions to grow up to experience, okay? And we will do our jobs, use all our knowledge, experience, but person need to grow up also to be part of process of healing or training or whatever. I cannot make somebody, you know, healthy, happy, whatever, but if they don't like to. We need to find out background. What's, what, what is obstacle there? Why do you not like to be healthy and happy? You know, <laughs> well, maybe they needed attention, you know? Okay, You're like little kid, you know, getting a little cutting finger and going around, kiss my finger, kiss my finger, kiss my finger. Because the kid looking for love and they have a little bit adults, they behave the same way. Going to the doctor, kiss my finger. <laughs> uh, you know, because they don't, 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 nobody talk with them, okay? Nobody to be dog and nobody care about them, you know, and they're going to doctor to buy little talks, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's how unfortunately life is. And we need to understand, okay, that's part of life, that's a part of experience. But when you come into me, I say, okay, you are my my space, we are my friend now. Let's go out to talk friendly, okay? Why you like to be your fingers to be kissed, you know? <laughs> okay. Why? Okay, and they'll be going deeper, okay. Well, nobody care about me, nobody ask me about anything, you know. You can see for older people, it's very common, you know. Grandmothers and grandfathers, they start to complain about health, okay? And because they, nobody had time to visit them. <laughs> okay, the only, only talk is, how are you? So, oh, my back, poor me, da, 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 da. But it's nothing wrong with back. It's actually just need attention, need time to submit, to tell them, how are you? Oh, we are good, good looking, you know, today, fresh, you know, whatever. You know, but this actually, we need to understand this psychology of, of people too. We need to give attention and time, okay? And attention and time is, let's go to exchange like human beings, good, uh, positive vibrations, not to be stuck with fears and, and discomfort. Let's go be cheerful, you know, grateful to see each other, you know? Let's go to share something, good things. What I learned today, I'm going to share with you. You will share something with me. And so we, we can expand our vibrations of life mm -hmm. that way. But uh, unfortunately, medical system is stuck with fear. You can see today we are on this world they are stuck with fear, okay? And fear is dominant. Everybody talk about fear. What, what bad could happen? I said, let's go put it this way. What good can happen? Okay, let's go to focus on the good because it's like, 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 like 
teeth in, in, in our jaw, you know, we're focusing on one bad one. <laughs> Let's go talk, talk about all of them, okay? Okay, because we need to understand, okay, it's difficult, it's certain difficulties, but let's go to see what is good happening from this. I, I know people invest beautiful time in this last year, okay, and they grow up, they learn a lot, they ex expand themselves, even if it's difficult time, quote mark. Okay, depends on personality, what we like to feed, what we like to feed in our lives. Okay, we need to be positive, positive on way, what we're learning through experience. Okay, because we have kind of certain difficult times to something to learn. We cannot be born wise. You know, we have difficulties in lives. We're learning through them. We're growing up and pass by them. Okay, that's how we're getting wise. Okay. Like if you don't learn things, repeating. Okay, and if we need to learn how these difficult times is there by reason to grow up. Reason to grow up. That's we get getting, getting mature. Maturity is very important. Okay. They may mature, we could be responsible and active and proactive and intelligent on the end, you know. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, and I want us to just finish this off with everyone maybe just uh, yeah, telling us one main tip that you could maybe summarize something you already said or something new you want to add, maybe for athletes, players out there. What can they do? What is one tip that you can give them to enhance their performance or to improve their game? Um, and before you do that, I just want to end off with a quote from Dr. Igor. He said, um, the best player will not necessarily win. The winner is the person who can best adapt to his or her surroundings and maintain an equilibrium physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I find that such a good summary of what we talked about today. It's so much more than just training more or even fixing your nutrition. There's a lot of other things going on. Okay, so Vesna, let's start with you. What what do you find is one or if there's maybe more things that you want to leave us with today? I think uh, I think people not only in sport but in their life. Um, first thing they because it's so much stress around us, and I think uh, first thing uh, thing which they uh, have to think about is how to take away the stress to think about it. The most of the things which we have around us, it's uh, actually is under our control if we will take it in our hands. So uh, maybe to not to forget to relax, to recover and to see the good things, you know, as Igor said, uh, not to, to be full of fears, but to see uh, through this fear is a good thing, actually. <laughs> and then uh, if you have these habits, uh, then you start to see more and more uh, good things uh, around you. And that's a first step for the balanced life because uh, around us it's that's true it's too too much fears it's uh, too much struggle and uh, if we will be uh, drowned in this it's it's too hard so um, first step is uh, being more positive to see the better things in yourself in life in uh, surroundings and uh, to bring more happiness in your own life let's say like this and then and then step by step to bring better nutrition, better, uh, let's say, uh, quality of life and so on. And then to be a happy person. The main thing is uh, to be happy because uh, success, it's, it's good. But, you know, uh, on, uh, the, most, the biggest success, I think, is to be a happy person in, in your life. That's the main thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> great. <laughs> great, great, great. I like it. Okay, and Boris, what do you want to I just, do? Well, I just wanted to, I, just, a, just a few things. I think um, prevention and preparation are just uh, the, the main things I think that, that I take out of this, this, this talk and chat with you guys also. Um, you know, and, and, and going back to you, the quote you just read by Dr. Igor is, is you know, like Bruce Lee said, you be like the water, you know, be, <laughs> be adjustable and, and, and find, your, find your way and find your goal but you have to be able to adjust and be flexible. And I think, um, you know, prepare the best you can, but you can't possibly prepare for every situation, uh, as, as we all know. Uh, but I think see seeking knowledge is also seeking advice, seeking knowledge from everybody that, that you respect. Um, and and some, sometimes you'll get wrong advice or, you know, not, no advice is wrong, but I guess maybe advice that's not perfect for you at that time. Um, and and you just have to kind of filter out certain things, but I think all the all the successful athletes are are willing to learn, work on themselves, and 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 sacrifice definitely, and, you know, 
So that's that's something I that I think is important. And mm -hmm. I thank you very much for inviting me to this. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it was like a nice talk. Thank it was a you. Pleasure. Yes. Okay. Pleasure to chat with Eagle. everybody. Dr. Eagle, okay, when you if, to leave if you're expecting here. something smart from me now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can beat what we just said. <laughs> some, 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 deep, some deep thoughts. Here. Uh, I, I like I like expression expression or sentence of Buddha. He said, "Take things lightly." Okay, it's a beautiful one which helped me a lot in my life. You know, which is a beautiful quote which is we need to keep in our life. Uh, this in, in, in some somehow in our storage, we have difficulties. You know, take things lightly. Okay, work on it. Okay, not kind of like end of the life. You know, there's some obstacle there. Let's go to work on it as much as we could. But take things lightly. Okay, it's a beautiful one. You know, and, and that's kind of how we can so obstacles can be passed and we can learn. We can grow up. We can you know share knowledge and so on. And obstacles in my life help me to grow up. And now I'm sharing with you today. Okay, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm aware about it. But what we, like human beings, we can do everything. We can be in jail, we can be in, in, in castle, we can be in hotels, we can be everywhere. But when we wake up in the morning, we can bless ourselves because we are alive. Okay, start to be aware we are alive. Okay, there's some people, they're just kind of like living deaths, you know, they're living around, imitate life, you know, nothing happening. But when we are coming with in the morning, wake up, in just a few seconds to bless ourselves, okay? People who are religious, they can pray, whatever, it's fine. But just to be realized, we are alive, we have one more experience, one beautiful day in front of us, okay? And what we can do for ourselves and the people around us. That's beautiful investment of few seconds, okay? Mm -hmm. Just be able to say, okay, I'm alive. Wow, beautiful. And now I have, I have hands, you know, I can use them. I have legs, I can walk, you know. I'm feeling healthy. What can I do for this beautiful experience of life? I can go into feed properly. I have options now. I can make smoothie for myself. I can make smoothie for all family. I make them everybody happy. Okay. There's little things that we can be trained to accept like norm. Okay. Start to be uh, realize we are alive. Okay. We are alive. Wow. We have one more day in front of us in our lives. How many days we have in front of us? Shall we spend in, in, in misery? Okay, well, we should spend as much as we could, you know, and to achieve maximum at that day. Okay, every day change day to day. Because a beautiful book that everybody can read is uh, Four Agreements from Don Miguel Ruiz. Beautiful book. And I actually recommend for all my people around in, in, in my professional sportsmen, whatever. And one of these uh, agreements is uh, always do your best, your best change day to day. Ta da! <laughs> beautiful. You know, so simple. Do your best, okay, what is possible. If it's rainy day, you cannot be, of course, outside, but do something at home, okay? You know, let's just kind of apply what is possible and do your maximum and uh, take maximum from that day. That, that, and to be aware, we can do it. So not be miserable about it because it's rainy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay, rain is by reason. We have now rain for grass to grow up and fruits to grow up and so on, <laughs> okay, to be aware. But uh, don't, don't be stuck with this and take things lightly. That's what I like to make this uh, underline of my uh, little uh, deep thoughts. <laughs> okay, that wasn't no, that bad. very good. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> that, that's the best one, yeah. Careful, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, okay. so, I mean, be a, be a happy person, take care of prevention and do your preparation. Um, you need yes. to seek advice. Um, you need to, you know, um, be open to education and take things lightly. So that's such a great summary. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eagle. Thanks, Vesna. Thank Thanks, Boris. Thank you for having us. Such thank a you, thank you. It was very thank nice. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you and very much. Zina, Zina, you one, better, one thing. Right? And one, thing one more thing. You know, if you have people who are listening to us, you know, if they grab some little gems there and there, we'll be fine. But uh, if they have any questions, they are free to email me or our friends, you know, and I, I'm willing to answer. You know, that's, uh, I'll give my point of any question. Doesn't mean they are, they are good answers, but uh, I will do my best. And uh, I like to help people because uh, that's my choice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Choice to help. Wonderful. Yes, thank you. Um, and I think um, maybe we're not, 
I don't think you're going to feel like answering questions right now. Do you prefer that they rather send you an email, Dr. Eagle? Uh, if, it, if it's uh, easy questions, I can answer now. You know, if, if they can send me an email, I can answer later. Okay. It doesn't matter. So let's see if there's uh, if one or two questions. Unfortunately, I have, I have previous engagement, so I have to, please, I really have to go please. now. But so I'll, I'll say goodbye to everybody. Yes. But, uh, I'll definitely watch this again on YouTube and <laughs> remind Wonderful. myself. Thanks for sharing Thanks your you wisdom, guys. Boris. It was amazing having you. And yeah, no worries. Really learn how to change our games and our lives. So, so thanks, thanks for joining. Hey. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Boris. Thank you, Thank you Boris. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Um, but Dr. Eagle, um, I just want to um, also really thank you for being such an open-hearted and a positive and a happy person. We can all see how happy you are. Um, and thank you for sharing everything that you've learned over the years. And yes, to teach us how to be the, the best version of ourselves. So thanks for yes. your time. And thanks for your generous hearts. And um, yeah, thank you, Vesna, for being here and sharing all the tips and um, all the insights that you've got. It was really a privilege to be able to connect with you. So um, I am going to, in this, while you ask maybe one or two questions, I am going to post Dr. Eagle's website um, in the chat box. You can visit the website if you want to see more. I'm also going to post my own website if you need more info or want to ask another question that I can also send to Dr. Eagle um, or if you need some support um, in your game or in your sport. Okay, so let's see if there are any questions that we can quickly answer. So I see there's quite a few in the in the chat box. If there's someone who wants, you can also unmute yourself. So if there's something specific you want to ask, you can unmute yourself and go for it. And in the meantime, I'm going to check if there's some uh, questions in the chat box. Okay. Just check if something interesting you can answer on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see. I see Halga's asking, what is the link between asthma and nutrition? What exactly got the athletes off of the asthma medication? Uh, big, big, uh, they have few triggers for asthma, and we need to understand from which direction it's coming from. But one, one of them is actually uh, bad nutrition and uh, knowing Chinese medicine, uh, organs that in, have interconnections and support each other. Large intestines and lungs, they're working together, okay? They're balancing each other energetically. If you have toxins in, in intestines, they're reflecting energetically our lungs, okay? Which is, uh, example, gluten in, in, in our life, okay? Let's say it could be something else. That's one of trigger. Could be also predispositions, you know, genetical predispositions. Let's say we're having issues with children who are born, uh, have long, long labor, mother have long labor and kid kind of getting stuck and lungs didn't open on time and always have a little bit weakness there. Okay, could be that directions could be also inhaling things. Let's say people who are eating, drinking too much uh, dairy and um, eating sugars and whatever, mucous membranes in lungs getting sticky, okay? And when we're inhaling something, let's say pollen, dust, uh, whatever is in air, we can build up slowly sensitivity, reactivity or allergy in real meaning, okay? And the, the body is trying to be rid of it. Okay? That's asthma, you know, body trying to cough out, you know, we're getting stuck because uh, mucous membrane is so thick and, and, and stagnating. Okay, we need, need to change biochemistry in the body and um, cleanse body properly. And a few more things, but a very, very, very big connection is uh, bad nutrition. Okay, of course, I don't talk about uh, junk food and uh, artificial uh, colors and uh, chemicals which they are put in food today, which they also could be a trigger for our intestines to be uh, stuck and late on lungs in our life. Okay, thank you. And then there's a different, another question from Fick. He asks um, whether, he said, Igor spoke about three levels of body feedback. What level is acid reflux? Uh, acid reflux generally coming from most of the time, not, not, not for everybody. Coming, uh, is, it, they are not born with uh, acid reflux. We are creating it, okay? And actually, we damaging uh, uh, chemically, biochemically, and uh, also autonomical neural system doesn't work very well in our stomach because we're eating some food which is triggering in stomach to be stuck and heat going backward, 
Okay, that's Chinese medicine. You need to find out what triggering it. Most of most of time is a wheat. Okay, most of the time is bit mixture, bad 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 mixture of food. Okay, and some are recognizing like it's wrong. Okay, I cannot process it all and trying to be rid of it in our, in our uh, lifting up energy through the through the mouth and so on and heat going up and that's a reflux. But uh, with proper eating, psychologically, very important because stomach, I, if I mentioned earlier, is mental organ, very important to calm down, okay, our mind, okay, when we're eating and have proper food. And it's everything possible to be out of re reflux. Need time, okay, but it's possible. Okay, anyone else want to maybe unmute yourself? I see there's one here, Ro Sanders is asking, please share the actual changes you made to Djokovic's diet. Actual change? If you sent me an email, I already sent you some insights, you know, that's uh, what you like to know. But because I'm talking now publicly, I will not talk about every single thing, okay, because it's not everything to share. Mm -hmm. But I, I share a very important one, proper eating and changing habits. That's kind of key. that's it then um yeah so thanks okay. for your questions and thanks again thanks dr eagle and okay. thank you everyone for watching